The Bay, British Aerospace, M777 Howitzer is the primary towed artillery piece of the U.S. Armed Forces and has effectively replaced the preceding M198 Howitzer. It is one of the smallest and lightest weapons of its type ever constructed, due to a combination of a titanium alloy construction and a methodical elimination of as much mass as possible. Though presently produced in the U.S., the M777 is actually a development of a British design. The origins of the M777 date back to the early 1980s, as a private venture by Vickers, which later merged with Bay, the current manufacturer, to develop an exceptionally lightweight 155mm howitzer for the export market. The primary market for this new weapon was the U.S. Army, who has recently fielded the M198 howitzer, but found it wanting. The primary purpose of the M198 had been maximum mobility and air transportability, but at over 7,000 kilograms, it was still a rather hefty artillery piece. Vickers was convinced that by simplifying the configuration of a 155mm howitzer and making expansive use of lightweight materials in its construction, they could make a weapon of equal firepower that was just over half the weight of the M198. Needless to say, figuring out how to make a 4-ton 155mm-L39 towed howitzer took some time and effort, most weapons of this type are significantly heavier, and the preliminary design wasn't ready until the spring of 1987. The main issue had been figuring out how to apply titanium alloys to the construction of the new weapon, in place to traditional steel, as titanium's impressive strength is also equaled by an impressive price tag and a very high level of hardness that makes it notoriously difficult to machine. The design was presented soon after to the U.S. Army, who were intrigued by the possibility of fielding such a weapon, and they authorized the construction of two prototypes in September of 1987. As the federal law prohibits the U.S. military from procuring weapons of foreign manufacture, Vickers teamed up with Textron to build this weapon in the U.S. There was also a competing design submitted by Royal Ordnance, whose development roughly paralleled the Vickers design. Two prototypes were constructed of the Vickers design, now dubbed the LW-155, shorthand for 155mm lightweight howitzer, which were delivered to the Army for testing and evaluation late in 1989. The U.S. Marine Corps had also taken an interest in the LW-155 in this time frame, seeing potential for such a weapon in their operations, where the weight of an artillery system was at a premium. The USMC evaluated the LW-155 as well in 1990. In the late 1990s there was a formal competition in which the LW-155 was pitted directly against the Royal Ordnance design, by this time named the Light Toad Howitzer, with the former ultimately being declared the winner. Following this decision, the U.S. Army formally designated the LW-155 as the XM-777. However, despite passing developmental testing with considerable media fanfare, the XM-777 quickly ran into trouble during its operational testing. Under conditions more accurate to actual service use, serious problems with metal fatigue, instability while firing, and damage inflicted by recoil quickly became apparent. These problems became apparent by 1998 and continued to plague the XM-777 and later the M-777 for many years. Some have never been fully resolved. In 1999, Textron left the XM-777 program, leaving Bay without a U.S. subcontractor to produce the weapon for more than a year. By September of 2000, Bay managed to subcontract several smaller companies to produce the weapon instead, each of which was to produce a different subassembly of the M777. The carriage was to be produced by Hydromill Inc., the stabilizers, spades and stabilizers by Major Tool and Machining Inc., the loading tray by Rock Island Arsenal, the elevation mechanisms by Wegman, the optical fire control system by Seiler Instruments and MFG, the traverse track by Rotec Inc., and the titanium alloys needed to build the complete weapon were to be produced by RTI International Metals Incorporated. Three companies were subcontracted to produce the XM777's titanium castings. Despite numerous ongoing problems and technical issues with the design, the DoD awarded a $135 million contract to Bay to initiate the low-rate initial production LRIP, phase of the XM777 in 2002 and formally type-classified it as the M777. The LRIP contract was for 94 howitzers, the first of which was completed in February 2003. 
Ultimately, despite the federal law, 30% of the M777, the suspension, running gear, and upper cradle, ended up being produced by base factory in the UK. The general appearance of the M777 is quite peculiar compared to most other towed howitzers, making quick recognition fairly easy. The rectangular muzzle brake is conspicuously hollow, with two enormous baffles. The towing eye is mounted on the base of the muzzle brake and has a spike-like shape. Unusually, the M777 has no trails. The M777's appearance changes noticeably between its traveling configuration and in its firing position. In its in-placed configuration, the M777 sits extremely low to the ground, with its stabilizers swung forward and its spades dropped to the ground behind it so low, that when the tube is in a level position, it is barely half a meter above the ground. Despite its low-slung proportions, the M777 still easily achieves high gun elevation, as the pivot point of the gun cradle is effectively behind both the saddle and carriage body. It is also possible to depress the tube slightly, though this capability is seldom used. Seen from above, the spades and stabilizers of a fully emplaced M777 take on a crucifix shape, which is essential for stabilizing it due to its lack of conventional trails. The appearance of the M777 is even stranger in its traveling configuration. Unlike most modern towed howitzers, the M777's gun is not traversed 180 degrees for towing. Instead, the complete weapon is towed from the aforementioned spike-like towing eye on its muzzle brake. In its traveling position is the two aft spades being folded upward and slightly forward, but not actually wrapping around the saddle. Most components of the M777 are made of titanium alloy, though some structural components are made of aluminum, and the gun tube is made of steel. An interesting weight-saving measure is that many of the parts in the M777 serve multiple functions, rather than having a separate part for each. For example, the hydraulics in the suspension are also used as a hydraulic jack. A hydraulically operated loading tray is mounted behind the breech on the right side, but no rammer is included. Standard M777S have an optical sight mounted on the left side, and provisions for an additional sight on the right side if required. A crew of eight is required to operate the M777 normally. It can also be operated by as few as five men in an emergency, but with a significantly reduced rate of fire. Some publications have stated that the ability of the M777 to be fired by only five personnel is unprecedented for a 155mm howitzer, but the preceding M198 could also be operated as such. The M777 requires three minutes to emplace and two to three minutes to displace. The maximum rate of fire for the M777 is four rounds per minute for up to two minutes, the sustained rate of fire is 2 rounds per minute. Indirect fire for the M777A1 and A2 is usually aimed using the digital fire control system. It provides rapid and accurate ballistic computation, navigation, pointing, and self-location capabilities, which allows the M777A1-A2 to perform effective fire missions rapidly, reducing the amount of time it must be in placed in a given location. The original M777 lacked this fire control system, requiring the crew to use calculators and dials to compute their firing solutions. All M777s have a direct fire capability and use day and night optical sights to aim the weapon. A wide array of ammunition is used in the M777, a few examples of which are described below. The primary projectile for the M777 had initially been the M107 E round, but this munition is gradually being expended in service and replaced by the M795 E round. This 46.7 kg projectile hold a 10.8 kg bursting charge, which may be TNT or IMX 101, depending on the customer. The US Army uses a TNT filler, while the USMC uses IMX. When fired from the M777 using an M119 or M203 propellant charge, the M795 has a range of up to 22.5 km and a CEP of 50 m. The improved charge-to-weight ratio and a significantly improved shrapnel and splintering pattern is claimed by the USMC to provide a 30% increase in lethality over the M107 round, though projectiles with high charge-slash-weight ratios also tend to have reduced penetration, an important consideration when engaging armor and hardened structures. The M107 is still used with the M777 as well, but stocks are slowly depleting. 
The M982 Excalibur is one of the most heavily used projectiles for the M777. This is a GPS guided year round, which boasts fin stabilization and near pinpoint accuracy. The CEP is claimed to be only 5M, giving it a range of up to 40 kilometers when fired from a 155mm L39 weapon, and the ability to be safely delivered in much closer proximity to friendly troops than an unguided projectile usually allows for. The programmable guidance system allows the weapon crew to set the Excalibur to land on a specific geographic location, allowing frontline troops calling in fire missions to designate specific high-priority targets for destruction by single projectiles, for example, a particularly problematic enemy pillbox. In addition to its GPS guidance, the Excalibur also has inertial guidance, which not only allows the projectile to maintain its ballistic arc even against heavy jamming, but also allows some guidance capability when GPS is unusable altogether, though it won't be as accurate. The Excalibur weighs 48 kilograms and carries a 22 kilograms PBXN9 warhead. Various sources differ on the reported unit cost of the Excalibur, with anywhere from $10.000 up through $214,000, but these figures are misleading. A careful examination of the DoD's selected acquisition report shows that a combined total of $14.691 billion was spent on the development and production of a planned 7474 Excaliburs, making the true unit cost $22.284 million. The DoD's published figure is off by a factor of more than 1,000. This actually makes the Excalibur more expensive than the M777 itself. The M549A1 Rap H is a rocket boosted year round which can attain a range of 30 kilometers when fired from the M777 if fired using the Zone 8 SM203 propellant charge. The M549A1 weighs 43.6 kilograms prior to fusing and carries a 6.8 kilograms bursting charge. The M864 Pekm, dual-purpose improved conventional munition, is a submunition dispersing projectile, which on descent breaks open and scatters large numbers of anti-personnel and anti-material grenades over a wide area, in layman's terms, it is a cluster munition. The payload consists of 24 M46 and 48 M42 grenades, which both have a shaped charge, i.e. high explosive anti-tank, or heat, and a secondary fragmentation effect making the M864 effective against a wide range of targets. The M864 weighs 47 kilograms and has an effective range of 30 kilometers, thanks to the addition of a base burner rocket booster. The M777 also fires smoke and a very wide range of mine-scattering projectiles as well. The M712 Copperhead laser-guided artillery projectile can also be fired from the M777, though with only 20,000 made and production terminated decades ago, the stockpile is rapidly dwindling. Any NATO standard 155mm shells can also be fired from the M777 as well, which hugely expands the variety of ammunition it uses. The M777's operators may thus sometimes use more unusual foreign ammunition during training exercises and combat operations. Canada was the first nation to employ the M777 in combat during the Afghan War, in support of Operation Archer in early 2006. The M777 was reportedly quite effective in this campaign, causing a large percentage of the Taliban casualties inflicted by ISAF forces, most of the damage inflicted on the Taliban was reportedly caused by only two guns. The deployment of Canadian M777S continued throughout 2006. The demand for fire support from these weapons was apparently quite substantial, but so was the consumption of ammunition as a result. It was reported in early 2007 that Canadian 155mm ammunition stocks in that theatre were running low, forcing the Canadian Army to fire less rounds in each fire mission, and perform less fire missions overall. The first US combat deployments of the M777 to Iraq and Afghanistan were in late 2007, and the first US M777 fire missions took place in January of 2008. While many of the Army's deployed M777S have long since been withdrawn from Iraq, the U.S. Marines made their first deployment of M777 batteries to that nation in March of 2016. As of mid-2016, M777S continue to fire in anger in support of operations in Iraq and Afghanistan, despite many in the media having dismissed U.S. participation in the conflicts there being essentially over.
Though the M777 is very light compared to nearly all other 155mm howitzers, it lacks the propulsion-capable APUs used in many other modern towed howitzers, such as the FH-70 and G5. The elevation and traversal of the M777 are completely unpowered. So the M777 has to be manhandled into position. There is also no rammer, so several crewmen with a long, curved ramrod must physically drive each shell and powder charge into the breach with their own strength. The main value of the M777's 4-ton weight was to be easy transportability by vehicles that couldn't handle the M198, but in practice, only heavy-lift helicopters and 6x6 cargo trucks are actually used to transport it in field conditions. Its much vaunted transportability by HMMWVs and helicopters as small as the UH-60 are seldom attempted. This is probably due to safety regulations and the gradual increase in the weight of the M777 since its initial field tests. The M777s are typically airlifted by a CH-47 Chinook, a CH-53E Super Stallion, or a V-22 Osprey, all of which are a far cry from the UH-60 Blackhawk. Reducing the weight of the weapon also has no effect on the weight or volume of its ammunition, nor the field supply trains required to carry it, which are a much more significant issue than transporting the weapon itself. There are many problems with using titanium instead of steel, rooted in the fact that while it is similarly strong, titanium alloys are much less flexible, making them more prone to metal fatigue, and significantly harder, making them immensely expensive to machine. The awkward proportions of the M777 also stem from the ruthless pursuit of weight reduction, and these present serious, practical problems of their own. Also this artillery piece is too light for the powerful 155mm ammunition. The lighter a weapon is that fires a given projectile and propellant charge, the more violent its recoil is. This has resulted in the recoil absorption mechanisms in the M777 wearing out dangerously fast in combat conditions. It is highly doubtful that these issues with the M777 can be fully resolved. Another major issue with the M777 is that its tube length is dated. The US Army began using 155mm-L39 howitzers in the 1960s, and by the early 1980s the 155mm-L39 had been eclipsed in development, production, and proliferation worldwide by 155mm-L45 howitzers. These, in turn, are being gradually supplanted across the world by 155mm-L52 howitzers. The danger of having artillery with a much shorter range than that of the enemy has been graphically demonstrated in the South African Border War, the Rhodesian Bush War, the Yom Kippur War, and the Vietnam War. In all of these conflicts, the side whose guns had a shorter reach ended up being devastated, because their artillery was constantly suppressed by longer-range enemy fire, while larger quantities of shorter-range enemy artillery operated without fear of being bombarded. The advent of the Excalibur projectile also doesn't resolve this issue, though it has an impressive range of 39 kilometers, equivalent ammunition fired from 155mm-L45 and 155mm-L52 weapons, such as the G5-52 howitzer, still has significant range advantage, leaving the US military vulnerable to the same devastation their firebases experienced in the Vietnam War when they came under fire by the Soviet M46 130mm field gun. By 2022 operators of the M777 were Australia, Canada, India, Saudi Arabia, Ukraine and the United States. In 2016 India has placed an order for 145 M777A2S, though India has proven a dangerous market for artillery producers, this sale follows in the wake of the Danel and Bofors scandals, both resulting in the cancellation of major arms deals due to alleged improprieties. By 2022 a total of 89 M777 howitzers were delivered to India and another 56 were planned to be delivered by June. Only 25 howitzers were originally delivered to India by BAE Systems. Other were locally assembled by Mahindra Defence. These are being deployed in mountainous regions near the border with China. In 2022 United States, Australia and Canada donated 142 M777 howitzers to Ukraine to defend against the Russian invasion. Most howitzers, at least 90, were donated by the US Marines from their stocks. Australian Army donated at least 6 units, while Canada donated at least 4 units.
These howitzers proved to be very effective against the Russian forces and had a big impact on the battlefield. The only other nation so far committed to acquiring M777S is Colombia. It is planned that the U.S. Marine Corps will donate a number of howitzers for Colombian naval infantry. The UAE has expressed intent to acquire the ordnance of the M777, which was to create an indigenous self-propelled version. In 2016 BAE Systems confirmed that the company is working with Emirates Defense Technology to develop a self-propelled version. The M777 has sold in large numbers and production continues. Approximately 1-200 pieces already completed. As of the recent deal to sell 145 minutes and 777 seconds to India for $750 million, it has a unit cost of $5.17 million. However the M777 has an unusually narrow customer base for an artillery piece on the market for over 20 years, despite also having extremely heavy publicity. This is mainly due to its high price tag. A typical 155mm howitzer costs about one-tenth as much. LW-155, prototype for the M777, built in the late 1990s. It has also been referred to by some sources as the 155LW. XM777, further prototypes of the M777, which incorporated additional improvements and fixes during the ongoing development of the M777. M776, ordnance of the M777, without the rest of the weapon system. The tube used in the M776 is the same M284 used in the M109A6 Paladin, with a modified muzzle brake. M777, basic production model, differing little from the LW155. The basic M777 was only the low-rate initial production model, and all except a few display pieces are being backfitted to A1 or A2 standard. M777A1, fitted with a digital fire control system instead of the optical sight. This version quickly superseded in development the original M777. While in development it was designated the M777E1. Test firings were performed in 2004. The full production contract for 495 M777A1 howitzers for both U.S. Army and U.S. Marine Corps was awarded in 2005. It effectively made the M777A1 the definitive production model during that time frame. The A1 models were to be produced from 2006 through 2009. Some were converted from M777S. The Canadian forces also placed an order for several M777S during this time frame as well. M777A2, same as the M777A1, but includes software allowing for the use of the Excalibur GPS guided shells. The first firing trials of the M982 Excalibur from the M777 took place in 2003, though the operational test firings of this round from the M777A2 weren't completed until 2007. Excaliburs by that time had already been fielded in Afghanistan. M777ER, short for M777 Extended Range, this weapon is an experimental M777A2 variant, with a 52 caliber tube. Though the range is hugely increased by the new barrel, the M777ER is one. ADEM longer and 450 kg heavier than the M777A2, which could pose additional mobility, balance, and handling problems. Program status is unknown. M777 tilt bed carrier, early prototype for an M777 howitzer carrier, which would carry the weapon aboard while in transit and then drop it to the ground during emplacement. Did not enter production. M777 Portee, British howitzer. It is an intermediate design between towed and truck-mounted howitzers. It is armed with the ordnance of the M777. Did not enter production due to funding problems. Brutus, experimental U.S. truck-mounted howitzer, which combines ordnance of the M777, based on an M1083 6x6 military truck chassis. Light-towed howitzer, competing design made by Royal Ordnance. This weapon had a much more conventional layout, with very long conventional trails, which were also used to tow it. Did not enter production or service. 
Tua 61 Pat B, a Russian lightweight toad howitzer developed in the 1990s, the Tua 61 is a 152mm artillery piece weighing only 4 300 kg, making in on of the few equivalents of the M777 in the world in terms of both bore and weight. Also like the M777, it is towed by its muzzle and has stabilizers instead of trails. Despite a lengthy evaluation and no official rejection, no production orders were placed. The M389 is its 155mm version for export. Like its parent, the M389 never attracted any sales. H4 is a Chinese clone of the M777 with a 155mm L39 tube. It has a total weight of 4,500 kg. Maximum range is 25 to 40 km depending on ammunition type. This artillery system was revealed in 2014. SLWH Pegasus, developed by ST Kinetics in Singapore, the Pegasus is a similar weapon to the M777, with a 155mm L39 tube, a titanium and aluminum construction, and a weight of 5-300kg.